on when I was a medical student, it was quite clear that um, people still were dying of cancer despite um, some of our best therapies that we had. And I also saw a lot of toxicity related to um, the therapies that we had, including surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, and thought that there uh, must be a better way to do this. I once had a patient with melanoma that had multiple pulmonary metastasis that, um, for some reason or another, without treatment, had um, eventually cured themselves of their melanoma. Um, I had run into the patient having seen that he had multiple pulmonary metastasis and uh, eight years later had no evidence of disease at all and with, without any known treatments. And it's, it's been suggested that his immune system had helped to cure him of uh, infections. And there are multiple examples of this happening in the past. In fact, of all people with cancer, somewhere between 2 and 5% will develop a spontaneous remission just from their immune system being able to get um, or eliminate the tumor. The treatment basically works by taking white cells out of the body that, that we can reprogram to tell the rest of the immune system how to effectively eliminate breast cancer. By that, what we do is we we focus them to make the breast cancer look like it's a virus or a bacteria to the rest of the immune system, activate the cells out of their body, and then we can give them back so that they're pre-programmed to go in a specific direction that we want. And that helps to get the right immune response on to fight the breast cancer. Currently, they, they are very promising. They've um, shown that when we can target one of the proteins critically involved in breast cancer development, this molecule called HER2 nu, in half of the patients that we've treated, we could actually eliminate entirely from their tumor this HER2 nu. And in treatment with early breast cancers, almost 20% of the patients had no disease left when we vaccinated them prior to them having um, a surgical excision of any DCIS that's present. So um, the results are, are highly promising, um, especially for the applicability of being able to prevent breast cancer. The immune system is very good at eliminating pathogens or, or bacteria and viruses from the body, and it's very effective. And you can also take a, a chapter from autoimmunity, where um, if, a, if a person's immune system gets overactive, it can actually even destroy whole kidneys or lung or cartilage which are rather large um, and they can destroy that over a course of time and so one could think if one could get a controlled autoimmunity against a cancer you might be able to even destroy large cancers that were um, somewhat smaller than a, than a kidney or a lung and, and eliminate them. Our hope is really that we won't be treating breast cancer eventually will be preventing it from starting and um, at current we're working on a few of the other protein relatives of this HER2 new protein to be able to stymie them um, early on so that they prevent a breast cancer from developing. This is especially true for those that are non-estrogen receptor dependent. Currently there are no breast cancer preventions for that group of patients. There's tamoxifen to help reduce breast cancer risk for patients that have estrogen receptor tumors and block their development. There, unfortunately, that medicine does not prevent non-estrogen dependent breast cancers. And we believe with this vaccine, we will have a good chance of being able to do that. There's a large group of us who do tumor immunology that are all under the belief that the immune system can be harvested to work against cancers. I think th there's been, it's been more difficult than people had anticipated. I think in breast cancer specifically, there's at least three or four groups now, um, Nordesis and the University of Washington and George Peoples and the, the Army, who have shown that if you can get an immune response against breast cancer, it actually can be effective. In addition, a lot of the chemotherapy studies are now showing that chemotherapy may have a lot of its benefits by knocking out bad immune cells and allowing the immune system to um, correct itself 
and function against breast cancer. So there's multiple areas where it appears that the immune system may be very important in breast cancer. With the money, we could cut the trials to, to run concurrently. We might be able to save anywhere from two to five years of um, tri trial time and get the results sooner, affecting quite a few women with breast cancer in the order of uh, anywhere from several hundred thousand to a million women. Well, hopefully this will lead to prevention and then when you talk about prevention you don't really have to worry about a cure because you can stop it before it starts that I think will be the most beneficial um, avenue of pursuit for this research so we don't really talk about cures we talk more about this is a, a way that we're gonna bring this in to prevent breast cancer ultimately by preventing it you won't need all the other treatments associated with breast cancer down the road over half the patients, and in fact 75% of the patients, we were able to eliminate the target antigen that we were targeting that's one of the causes of breast cancer, and that is this HER2 protein. So that tells us, with a very small group of patients, that the vaccine is doing what we wanted to. We're able to see that people's immune responses are turned on when they were previously off against this protein. And now we're also able to see over time that, that the patient's immune response stays elevated against HER2. So that comes into the prevention uh, arm of this. This is a very exciting time. That in general, people are discovering more and more pathways that are involved in early breast cancer development. And using vaccine technology, um, we should be able to target multiple pathways and prevent a good percentage of most breast cancers by using a vaccine technology.